Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So today we're doing another video on gases, so let's get moving. Bam! So today we are talking about the molar volume of a gas. And here's our problem that we're going to do here. So I'm going to read this out to you here. So it says, 34.7 milliliters of hydrogen gas is collected in a gas measuring tube, that's a e eudometer tube, over water. The temperature at the time of the experiment is 26.0 degrees Celsius. The vapor pressure of water at 26 degrees Celsius is 25.2 torr. The pressure at the room, uh, sorry, the pressure of the room at the time of the experiment was 772.3 millimeters of mercury. So I did highlight it here um, by italicizing it, but I want to point out something for you, and it says over water. Anytime you ca collect a gas over water, you must use one of the gas laws, and that gas law is Dalton's law, okay? So the question for this problem is, what is the volume of the dry gas at STP conditions? So the other thing you need to know is what are STP conditions, and we'll talk about that here too. All right, so before we get started on this, I'm going to have a look-see at this uh, experimental setup and design because this is a very common experiment to do in the laboratory. All right, so here's our experimental setup here. So right over here, we have a ring stand with uh, a, uh, a, a clamp there, that clamp, and then I have a few little bits of equipment down there. One of the solutions here is 12 molar hydrochloric acid, which is concentrated hydrochloric acid. So a little uh, zoom in on some of the setup is the gas measuring tube is on the right hand side here. Then I have a piece of copper wire, okay? And inside that copper wire is a piece of magnesium ribbon. And that magnesium ribbon is uh, folded and weighed, its mass taken, and then the copper wire is wrapped around that magnesium ribbon. And then there is a rubber stopper with a hole in it. So what you do is you take your gas measuring tube, you take the open end up and the closed end down, you pour in some 12 molar hydrochloric acid in the bottom of the gas measuring tube, then you layer very carefully water over that 12 molar hydrochloric acid. Then what you do is you place this apparatus, you place the uh, copper wire magnesium combination into the tube with the water portion in it, insert the rubber stopper, and then, uh, then what you do is you invert the gas measuring tube, and you invert it into a beaker, and that beaker is filled with water. You need to make sure that that rubber stopper is not slammed down to the bottom there of the beaker, and that's why that clamp system is set up so that you uh, can hold on to that gas measuring tube without physically holding on to it. Now, 12 molar hydrochloric acid is more dense than water. Since it's more dense than water, then it will fall from the bottom of the tube. Well, it's now the top of the tube. It used to be the bottom of the tube, but it will fall now from the top of the tube and it will go down through the gas measuring tube and it will react with the magnesium ribbon very quickly. Okay, this is a single displacement reaction, and you get hydrogen gas and magnesium chloride as products. Okay, another uh, experiment that you can do is actually uh, calculate this based on the amount of magnesium that you have here. Okay, and so then the next step here is that you're going to allow that hydrochloric acid to fall down inside the tube, react with that magnesium ribbon. It will not significantly react with the uh, copper wire, so the copper wire will stay there completely intact, but it will react with the magnesium ribbon very vigorously, produce that hydrogen gas, and then that's that hydrogen gas that is collected. So, um, and you can see right here on the top of this is the hydrogen gas that is collected in this experiment here. All right. All right. So, so let's continue on with our mathematical calculation of measuring the amount of gas collected compared to the dry volume of this gas, since this gas is collected over water. So you should see in this gas measuring tube, the lower portion is water. The upper portion is filled up with gas, and that is hydrogen gas. You could verify that by taking a lit match to it, and it will make a popping sound. All right, so let's do the math on this problem of what we are trying to do here. And at the, we're using Dalton's Law, like I said before, because the key words there in the problem were over water. 
So the pressure total is equal to the partial pressure of water, and that was given in the uh, uh, activity. It was given in the uh, wording of this problem. And it's at a specific temperature, and that's critical. And then plus the partial pressure of hydrogen. So the total pressure of the system was measured with a mercury barometer. The partial pressure of water was uh, taken from a textbook. And then you solve for the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas, and that is right here. So I've taken the partial pressure of the sorry, the partial pressure of the water vapor, 25.2 torr, and then the total pressure, which was measured in millimeters of mercury, at 772.3 millimeters of mercury. Now I'm hoping that you remember that millimeters of mercury and torr are actually the same. That means one millimeter of mercury equals one torr. So we can actually subtract these to get the partial pressure of hydrogen in millimeters of mercury. Okay. Now, I'm going to convert this millimeters of mercury into another set of units. And those other set of units that I'm going to use are kilopascals. So I've used 760 millimeters of mercury, which in this case, because it's a unit conversion, has an infinite number of significant figures. The 101.325 kilopascals has an infinite number of significant figures, again, because it's a unit conversion. And I have the same number of significant figures, that's four, in the 99.61 kilopascals that I had in the 747.1 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so now I've converted it to kilopascals. And the reason I've done this is because the units for STP conditions are using kilopascals, so that makes this nice and easy. So I'm going to always convert to what the STP condition units are. Okay, so here's my equation here, and this whole entire equation is the combined gas law. So on one, the left-hand side of this, I have the conditions under wet conditions, that's the wet gas, and on the, the dry conditions on the right-hand side, I'm solving for the volume of the dry hydrogen gas that's highlighted in yellow there. STP conditions, it's standard temperature and pressure. The standard temperature is 273.15 Kelvin, and the standard pressure is 100 kilopascals exactly. There are no, uh, uh, it's an infinite number of significant figures for both of those. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the values here into this equation here. I've got the pressure of the wet gas that was converted into kilopascals. I got the volume of gas that was collected and that was in that gas measuring tube that I showed you before. And I had the temperature that I converted from degrees Celsius, 26 degrees Celsius, to Kelvin. And then, I can, and then on the right hand side there, I have the STP conditions. I'm going to solve for the volume of the dry hydrogen gas. I need to look at my units here. Um, and number of significant figures. You should see that the units are going to cancel out. I got significant figures here. The least number of significant figures are three, so therefore my answer is going to be rounded to three significant figures. So the volume of the dry hydrogen gas is 31.6 milliliters. Hopefully that works out well for you. That's a really super cool problem. That's the molar volume of a gas. Okay, I am the crazy hat chemist, and of course I got to have a crazy hat, so here it is. Oh yeah, baby. You have a great day. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like that as well. And I'm going to see you next time for some more gas laws with Avogadro's Law. Bye now.